And so many times we forget the source of the greatest uh, strength and power of all things, and that is God himself. Many, many years ago, I wrote a song. I've written many, many songs that, that became what they call classics or standards or songs that were sung by so many other artists most people don't know I wrote them. I was working on this one particular song. Oh, this was back in 1980. Anyway, <laughs> I was working on this song, and you got to realize, early on in my career as a Christian artist, I hadn't been a Christian all that long, and, and so yeah, I, I wasn't exactly Mr. Scripture. Uh, like, I went to a music conservatory and majored in classical piano. I never went to seminary, never went to Bible college. I never, I was never mentored. I was, no, 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 no. I just became a Christian and started writing songs that God laid on my heart to express what he was doing in my life. And so, so much of my songs are just personal, visceral statements. Although over the years, I've become more familiar with God's word. And I've certainly spent my, uh, a tremendous amount of time in recent years, especially studying the word, and becoming much more proficient in it. But I, was, I, w I remember I was working on this song that I had already written the music to. And most songwriters, by the way, they start with the lyric. They start with the words. They write the words, then they put some music to it. I worked the opposite because I started out in classical music. I thought in terms of notes and music. In other words, my earliest pieces were not really, didn't have words. They were just piano pieces, musical pieces, you know. And then I would add some lyrics later. Well, after I became a Christian, I started doing this. Well, I wrote this song, this music. And we'd actually gone into the studio. It's when I was recording my fourth album. And uh, we went and actually recorded the piano part and the orchestra part and the band part and the drum parts, everything else. The whole piece was finished except the vocal. Well, we couldn't record a vocal because I didn't have any lyrics. And I remember I was in the studio with my producer. And uh, he said, have you finished that last song? Have you finished the lyrics on this last song? I said, no, 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 I haven't yet. He says, well, you need to hurry. We need to record the vocal tomorrow. I said, well, I don't have any. In fact, I had come up with several different sets of lyrics, and all of them were, were, were cheesy. Okay. And I, I said, no, I'm just not ready yet. He says, we're on a deadline, Dave. I just got a call from the record company. They want to release this thing in mid, like at the end of July. The only way we can do this is if we do this vocal tomorrow. That's the only... And I said, I don't have any words. And he said, go write some. So I went back to my hotel room. And fortunately, I was a music industry hotel. I actually had a piano in the room with me, believe it or not. And uh, anyway, I sat there and I thought, well, now, now I'm in a fix. I got 12 hours to write a song. I spent nine months trying to come up with a lyric. Now I'm gonna, supposed to write it in 12 hours. Well, I was sitting there thinking about it, and I got my Bible, started reading through it, just anything, and I began to ask God to help me. And it was at that moment that I realized I had spent all this time working on this lyric, and I had not once asked God personally what he wanted me to say in this song. Now, a lot of people get really nervous when you start talking. As people who are not Christians, they, they get nervous when you start talking about God told him. And admittedly, you need to be careful that anything you feel God has told you to do or led you to do, that it lines up with Scripture. Yes. And that's how you know it's from God or not, by the way. Doesn't line up with Scripture. Some other spirit, baby. So I, I, I got on my knees, and I realized I needed to repent. Now, writing a song about God's love, writing a song about Christ, writing a song that expresses my faith in Him and what He's doing in my life, that's a good thing to be doing. But many, many times we think because we're doing something that's worthwhile or good, that we therefore, the other rules don't apply. No, the rules do apply. And that is never, never, never try to do something of importance without God. It's like fishing. I remember back in John chapter 21, the disciples were out fishing. They fished all night, didn't catch anything. The morning came, Jesus stood on the shore and he said, guys, throw the net on the other side of the boat. So they did. Suddenly they had more fish than they could carry. See, Jesus is the only one who knows where the fish are. Oh, yeah. Jesus is the only one who knows where the fish are. Jesus knows the answer before you ask it. He's just waiting for you to ask it. So I got on my knees and I began to ask God to forgive me. I needed to repent. So I did. Got up off my knees, got back, sat on the bed with my Bible, started flipping through. And I wasn't reading any particular scripture, but all of a sudden the phrase, we are the reason he gave his life, popped into my head. Just fell out of the sky. Just all of a sudden, we are the reason he gave his life. And I went, ooh, I like that. So I wrote it down. And I finished writing that first. This is absolutely true how it happened. I wrote that first. And as soon as I finished writing that line, the phrase, we are the reason he suffered and died. Ooh. 
It rhymes. <laughs> so I wrote that down. We are the reason he suffered and died. God actually is a poet. <laughs> and I finished that line and suddenly, to a world that was lost, he gave all he could give. To a world that was lost, he gave all he could give. To show us the reason to live. To show us the reason it was lived. <sighs> And I'm writing, and then the first verse, all this is just coming like this, people, falling out of the sky. Got to the first verse. As children, we would dream of Christmas morn. Wait a minute. My intellect started getting in the way. Wait a minute. This song about Easter, Jesus dying on the cross, gave his life. Can't have Easter and Christmas in the same song. And it's like God, you know, you know that thing when you know it's right, you just know it? Well, I'll tell you something, God's the same way. When it's right, you just know it. And it's like God said to me, David, shut up. Stop thinking too much. You're thinking too much. Write down what I tell you. Well, I'd just written these four phrases that were like borderline profound and I'm going okay 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 as children we dream of Christmas morn and all the gifts and toys and I am telling you people as God is my witness within 15 minutes I had the entire lyric written and done now so I immediately started second guessing myself why because nothing could come that quickly and easily and still be good if it's good, I must work on it for years. <laughs> so I start going through it and I start looking to try to tighten it up. And it's like, it's like I'm, I'm, I'm right in there and I'm not getting anywhere and I'm trying to erase. I, I got really obsessed over and, if, and for. Like what word they, like those little words, and, if, and I'm focused. And it's like, once again, God says, David, what are you doing? Would you put the pen down and go to bed? You got to sing this in the morning. <laughs> Well, after about 30 minutes of beating my head against the wall, I realized I was getting nowhere, so I obeyed God. It's like when Jonah was there. You know, Jonah was, uh, he, see, see, Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh. He didn't want to go to Nineveh. It's, it's not because of any reason. He, said he, he didn't like them. He had some against the people in Nineveh. He was prejudiced against the people in Nineveh. God said, I want you to go to Nineveh and preach to them. And it's like Jonah went, no, I ain't, I, I, no. I ain't, going to, I ain't going to Nineveh. I'll go to Florida. I'll, I'll, I'll go to a nice beach resort, <laughs> bed and breakfast, maybe. God says no. So Jonah, then he, he didn't want to go to Nineveh, so he ain't going to Nineveh. So, you know, he gets, he gets thrown overboard. He gets swallowed by a big fish. He gets, he gets vomited out by the fish on the show. And it's like, it took all that for Jonah to finally go, okay, I'll go to Nineveh. <laughs> same thing, same thing, same thing, people. Same thing. 30 minutes, I sat there beating my head against the wall, and I said, okay, God, all right, that's it. Went to the studio the next day, and I was scared. I was scared because I was afraid my producer would tell me I was suffering a delusion. <laughs> because I had been accused of that before by my big brother, repeatedly. I got to the studio, and I showed my producer the lyrics I had just written the night before. And he just... He just was blown away. He just, oh, man, this is it. And I said, what, what is it? He said, man, this is incredible. And I said, really? He said, it bears witness. I never forget him saying that. It bears witness. <laughs> Whatever. So he started recording it. I recorded the whole song right there. And the rest was history. The song became a, a, a career song for me. It's been recorded by over 200 other artists besides myself. It's been sung all over the world in countless foreign languages. It's been one of the biggest songs of all time. It's on the list of 100 most uh, famous Christian songs in the world. It's, it's, you know, what can I say? It's in hymn books.